This is episode 12 of my Road to Unicum series. Today we look at the IS-3, a tier 8 Soviet heavy tank that is famous for its pike nose design. Looking at this in Tank Inspector, you can see that the pike nose offers about 170 millimeters of effective armor at this intermediate distance. You don't have to worry about the lower front glacis in the IS-3, it's very well protected. And as your hull starts to be angled away from the person shooting you and you're flattening out one side of the pike nearest your opponent, you can see that the armor values are dropping into the 160s and if you angle enough you'll even drop it into the 150s, which is very penable by tier 7 and tier 8 tanks. You also have to be aware that as you get close to opponents, if they have good gun depression and can aim down, they're effectively negating the vertical slope of the pike and so the effective armor value will drop down close to 160 and the turret roof is also a prominent weak spot uh, for tanks that are on higher ground or taller than you they can shoot down and this is penetratable even by tier 1 guns. So I think the, the bottom line is that while this is built to be a brawling tank uh, due to the high alpha, slow reload and poor accuracy in gun handling, you don't want to overly rely on the pike nose. You know, it can give some trollish balances for you, but it can also fail you at the wrong time. As we're driving into the city, I have the auto accelerate on so I don't have to keep my finger on the button to move forward. And I'm watching the deployment of our light tanks. The light tanks are pushing field and I'm also watching the J Panther who is the TD down on the J line. And if he had continued to move a little bit more forward to the east, I would have stopped to see if I can get some shots on early spotted tanks along the 8 and 9 lines, but since the J-Panther stopped, I figured it probably wasn't going to light anything meaningful. If you look at the position of the friendly IS-3 who's just to my left or north of me, he's in a more flexible spot in terms of being able to peek out from different buildings and to have various fields of fire, whereas I've gone down into a quarter lane where there's really not much that I can see unless an opponent pops out directly east of me. I move toward the railroad tracks and an opposing IS-3 is going to have the first shot advantage since he's already at the corner. This IS-3 nails me through my front hull, but he's using side scraping technique and it's not really recommended for this tank for the reasons that I mentioned and because he was exposing the side and rear of his tank, I was able to set his tank on fire so even though we exchanged one penetrating shot a piece, he took more than twice the damage that I did. This friendly Ferdinand makes the cardinal mistake of going around a corner into multiple enemy guns and this is particularly egregious when you consider that he's a non-turreted tank so he can't just pop out like a medium snapshot and then pull back and that makes him an easy finish and target for the 7-1 so now we've lost already lost that tank in town and in a moment we're going to lose a T-34. We're losing the initial brawling exchanges in city this is not looking so good here but out in the field, our tanks are already aggressively pushing toward their base. I back up a little here. You know, the Centurion 7-1, I know that as long as I'm not spotted, he's going to assume that my gun is going to be aiming toward where he is, or he, he has to assume that because he only has 100 HP and he's very easy for me to one-shot. Now that I've been spotted, the 7-1 knows, knows where I am, and so I can't back out perpendicular as I come out behind this building if I want to move back into that K-lane because I'll be given the Centurion first shot advantage because he'll be able to, to pre-aim, snapshot, and then move back. As it turns out, he's on the other side of the buildings, but I have to you know, play with the assumptions of where I would be if I were him. And this IS-3 comes around. His hull is very exposed aside, so that's an easy penetrating shot, especially for this 225 penetrating gun. And the nice thing about the IS-8 is, is that it's part of a series of, of heavies at Tier 8 which have good enough penetration to be meaningful in Tier 9 and Tier 10 battles. So that IS-3 with that kill shot, his hull was angled and probably the pike had about 155 effective millimeters of armor, which really is very low. Coming up, you're going to see that I'm going to end up taking fire from the Super Pershing and from the 7-1, which is kind of a tough spot to be because they, they're you know out shooting me 2-1. to one, And I take several penetrating shots in succession. I also know that I'm being flanked here, but I can't turn my turret or hull to face that VK because then I'll be giving up easy flanking fire to the two mediums that are directly east of me. 
I am making a mistake in some of the positioning I have of my pike nose. When I was in this replay at this time, I thought that the lower front glacis was a weak spot, and it turns out it's not. It's actually pretty strong. When you move up to the tier 9 IS-8 and the tier 10 IS-7, the lower front glacis becomes more and more a very prominent weak spot. But at this tier, you don't really have to worry about it getting penetrated too much by tier 8 and tier 9 tanks. So I ate a series of penetrating shots from the Super Pershing and the 7-1, and then I end up bouncing a whole bunch in succession. So this armor, like I said, can be very trolly, very unpredictable. And I'm in a very awkward position now of having been flanked on the west, north, and east. So I've got tanks on three sides, but I'm just being patient and sitting here because our light tanks are rushing down the nine line. So they're about to flank the remaining enemy tanks I have in city and I'm spotted now. It's most likely not by the Tiger. I've got hard cover here and he probably can't see me. I'm guessing it's the VK, but because I'm spotted I can't turn my turret around and look because if I do that the 7-1 will know and will be able to pop her out in the corner and kill me. I'm also taking a gamble here that the VK is going to be really fixated on our Ardys, which turns out to be a correct gamble. Because I had hard cover I had plenty of time to turn and face my pike nose toward that Tiger 2 bounce a shot and then finish him off with a shot to the lower front glacis. So the VK has killed one of our arties and the T-37 and I are rushing back towards base. I actually just am asking the T-37 to be careful. I wasn't watching him you know carefully during the battle. It turns out in my opinion he's our most valuable player and is the reason why we win this match. You'll see this as soon. And the T-37 and I are giving chase to the VK. We're just trying to hope to bail out the, the M-12. But as it turns out, their VK pushes around a corner, probably of a building here, and our M12 and our VK kill each other, which is sad for our arty, but is actually a good exchange for us. Because now that we have a two-for-one tank advantage and we have a light tank, we're going to milk that vision control advantage for all it's worth. And, you know, there's a real, there's a lot to be said about light tanks playing smart, you know, being active throughout the battle, but conserving their hit points enough so that they can really dictate endgame situations. And this particular T-37 driver, you know, I looked him up after the battle, and his recent WN8 is almost a thousand points higher than his account WN8, so he's really turned the corner over the last thousand battles in terms of understanding the game. And, you know, if you just follow his minimap icon through the replay, you know, he goes north, heads toward the opponent's base, helps to wipe out their arty, flexes south to spring our tanks that are pinned down in city since you know we're getting our butts kicked, and then flexes back toward cap to help protect our arties. And he's spotting in the field, and I have two approach lanes toward their base. We figure that the IS-3 is, is in their base, so I can either cross the middle of the map where I'll go across exposed ground, or I can go through city. And obviously the city is the, is the safer route. If I go across open ground and I'm moving, I have no stationary camo bonus and it's most likely that the enemy IS-3 will spot me before I spot him and he'll have the first shot advantage and this is important because I'm going to need multiple shots to take him out whereas he would only need one shot to kill me. So for those reasons I opt to go city and if I were to run into him and spot him before the T-37 does that's okay I can leverage the hard cover and buy time for the T-37 to flank the IS-3. And I mention this because I've seen a lot of battles lost where the side with the numerical advantage doesn't take smart approach lanes and they don't work together and they end up giving the other team a series of one versus ones that the other team wins and the outnumbered side ends up pulling out the victory. Here I really appreciate what the T-37 tells me. He's like, he's telling me just to hold on a bit here because I'm almost parallel or level with him. And there's no reason why I should be given that, you know, he's the tank with the vision control and you know, active camo when he's on the move. So he spotted the IS-3 and he lets me know he hasn't been spotted yet. So he's running along the zero line kind of down there in the trench below the railroad to get very close to the IS-3. So he's got him lit again. And I wait a moment before coming over the hill, both because I want the IS-3 spotted and I want to make sure his gun's not aiming toward me, get a clean penetration, and then the T-37 cleans it up. Fantastic job by that light tank and it really speaks to the power of a good light tank driver, you know, how much they can control end game situations. I pick up an ace tanker mastery badge and dealt over 4500 damage and bounced over 1300 damage. Probably would have bounced more shots if I had kept that pike nose pointed straight, but really I shouldn't be relying on it and using hardcover better. 
In the next video, we're going to look at the IS-3, but in a tier 10 battle, and you can vote on the poll to let me know what tanks you'd like to see after that. Take care.